overflowing. I wish I was home. I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing. That line right there. I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing. I thought about that be- uh, 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 as for my introduction with, for a little help because you are making it possible for people to stay with the things they've been knowing. Mm. Oh, yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest, Dr. Paul Ramsey. Howdy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. thank you so much for coming in. I sang um, uh, with my friends at Mile High Church about a few weeks ago, and um, uh, and I was very um, blessed because a little help was on the same the same service as I, and I got to hear about this fantastic organization. And I am very passionate about our seniors and our elders. Um, I think, um, you know, the world is changing so fast for them. And, you know, it's getting harder and it's getting more expensive to live in the world. And so I thought, I, I want to have you on so we can talk about your organization and learn, uh, people can learn about it and learn how they can help. Great, great. great. Mm-hmm. So can you give us just a little, a little background about how it all got started? Sure. So it, 10 years ago now, um, there was an article in AARP magazine and then a few other articles in Wall Street Journal and things like that about an organization called Beacon Hill Village in Boston. And a group of neighbors in Washington Park in Denver read the article and saw that this Beacon Hill Village was um, folks who would, lived in their homes in their, in their neighborhood of Beacon Hill in Boston for their lifetime. They had built their families there. They had you know, raised their families there, built a life there, done all those things. And then as they were failing with small things here or there, um, many of the folks began to leave. The, their neighborhood. And this group of neighbors said, we don't want that. We'd love to be able to stay. And so they decided to, to develop an organization that would pitch in um, for neighbors to pitch in to do the little things that would allow um, folks to stay in the homes that they love so much and the neighborhoods they love so much. And that organization now, Beacon Hill Village, is probably 12, 13, 14 years old. And, um, but after the article in AARP magazine, um, Organizations like ours sprouted up all over the place. And our organization, A Little Help, began as Washington Park Cares in just the two neighborhoods right around Washington Park. And it was a group of folks um, in their 70s and 80s who began um, who began the organization 10 years ago. And four and a half years ago, uh, they hired me as the first full-time um, staff person with the charge of growing the organization. And so – uh, pretty quickly, we rebranded as a little help. And now in the Denver area, we're in about 25, 30 zip codes. So we've gone from being in being in one or two zip codes to being in, um, you know, 25, 30. And we've grown um, just recently into, with the help of Mile High Church and, and the city of Lakewood and some other folks, into Lakewood. And, and now we're kind of moving through uh, Jefferson County. Um, and we've also uh, have presence in Chafee County up Salida and Buena Vista. Um, so, um, but the idea is is still we still just have a few staff people two and a two and a half two and three quarters <laughs> staff, um, and we but now we have um, hundreds of volunteers um, helping um, about four hundred seniors in in the in our. Uh, in the areas we serve, um, to thrive in their homes. And we do that through um, giving rides to the doctor, to a beauty appointment, to the grocery store, uh, doing small tasks, uh, maybe um, organizing uh, paperwork, or um, we have uh, some volunteers that will help with taxes. We have all those things. Um, but it is a little help. And so some of our – some of the help we give is helping folks navigate – where they may need a lot of help, and so pointing um, them in direction point, of different organizations. Yes, and, and and we call that kind of a warm handoff, um, mm-hmm. because as most of you know who are listening, you have a, a, an elder in your family or a loved one who's a neighbor, and 
the process of getting what you need can be very confusing for any of us. And especially now, a lot of that um, today, a lot of the help is technologically based. And so to find right. to find what you need on the internet or to do those things is, can be very confusing. And so our staff folks and specialized volunteers will help kind of um, – give a warm handoff to maybe the agency that they need help with, and it may be a Dr. Cog uh, network of care, you know, the the Denver Regional Council of Governments. They may need help um, getting pointed in the right direction with an agency there, Volunteers of America, or Jewish Family Services, Catholic Charities, those type of things. Um, And so that that way we help with the navigation. We also have um, a few hundred uh, kind of preferred providers or vetted folks who our members have used. And so maybe it's a plumber or um, an electrician or a tax preparer or, you know, you, you, you throw in all these different folks. And they these are folks who have proven to be trusted. And for our members, they will normally give some type of a discount. And um, if there's any confusion in the transaction or anything else, we can kind of help navigate that as well. And so um, – most of the things we do are really volunteer driven um, and we don't – like I said, we're a little help. So we don't give you a ride every day if you're an elder member of ours. But we'll give you a ride once a week and um, and that usually – another thing that that does, if you're the caregiver, you know, a family member and, and you're taking your mom um, to four appointments a week or those kind of things um, – that one day means a lot. Oh, it means a it huge means a amount. And then we also have other, you know, maybe a little bit more than a little help type of programs. Like our care share program is our, our more highly trained volunteers. All of our volunteers are trained and background checked. And um, but the the care share program is a more is a higher level of training and a higher level of background check. But those folks um, they'll offer. Uh, on an ongoing basis, once a week, maybe three hours of care respite for the caregiver. And so if, uh, let's say, uh, an elder couple um, is uh, that that, that they've been married for 45, 50 years, and the the woman of the house, you know, the the wife uh, has a, uh, has some dementia issues. And so her husband's life has become caring for her. Um, These specialized volunteers um, that are pretty highly trained, they'll come in and have activities and other things for that three hours a week, every week. And a lot of times that that gives her husband a chance to go have a beer or go get his haircut or go to a movie or whatever. Which is so important because if if you've ever been a caregiver, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of weight. You know, you're doing it. You're doing it of love, you, you know, out of love. But basically, you're, you're taking care of a, another person, and everyone needs a break. Yeah, everyone, everyone needs, needs a, break. a break. And and one of the things that I found that's really interesting in the care share program is um, the scenario I mentioned. A lot of times, instead of leaving the house to go do a chore or do something else, um, the husband uh, – or wife, I mean, I'm just giving a scenario, mm-hmm. will stay w- stay there because that volunteer brings in new life and a new perspective and a whole new, new energy, energy mm-hmm. to, the, to the home. And it's just – and they get to get a little bit of that new energy um, in a in, – like you said, in a, in a caregiving situation that can get, become pretty exhausting and right. you forget who you are at times. You, you've taken on only the identity as a caregiver. Um, one thing I should mention is that to, uh, you know, we we accept volunteers from all over the Denver area, and if you're the way we grow, um, we 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 have a small staff. The way we grow is by having folks who are interested in growing in their community becoming part of a site team, and so they begin to kind of strategize picnics and um, and partnerships with a scout troop or businesses and all those kind of things, and so um, that's a huge way that we do it um and you can see that you can be part of something that isn't 
already. You know, this is we're building something that is not and and that needs to be. And I love it. And I want to say that there there's a membership fee, which I I found very reasonable, mm-hmm. very reasonable for what they're giving. But also in this calendar, I was looking here. You got senior cooking classes, yoga classes, mm-hmm. you know, games, uh, mm-hmm. book clubs, knitting and crocheting. Mm-hmm. This is so important. It's an outlet. It's an outlet for our seniors to to get with people who are like you know who who are in the same age bracket and it's also with the volunteering a chance for kids to get involved to learn the importance of giving back mm-hmm. uh, adults and I just really love this program and I just want to thank you so much for coming in and letting us know about it again the uh, the organization is called a little help and can you give everyone your information your contact information sure so you can call our office seven two zero two four two nine zero three two or uh, go to our website, alittlehelp.org, um, and uh, you can learn everything you need to know there. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to share with you all about uh, what I think is a wonderful organization. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming up to North Glen. You're welcome. All right.